Hmm. Um, yeah, that doesn't look right. The repeater should be a lot stronger than that. So I'm on my way up to the repeater site this morning. Uh, we had a bit of a fault pop up yesterday. Um, I'll tell you what, the job of a repeater officer, repeater maintenance technical person, whatever you want to call them, the job's never done. <laughs> There's always something to do. So this repeater is part of our um, multicast voted uh, simulcast system, which I've done videos on before. And this is our main site. So uh, I noticed yesterday that the transmitter was down in output power. And in actual fact, it's down quite a lot. It's down about 30 dB. I did a little bit of testing um, just to see what my normal, I know what my normal signal strength is at home that I receive it at. And um, it's down to about a, it's usually 20 over nine. It's down to about an S4, S5. So um, I did a bit of calibration and worked out that my receiver is around about, I think it's about six dB per S point. And um, so yeah, the repeater's down about 30 dB. So I did a little bit of testing as well on receive to see if it's still receiving okay. It, it kind of is still receiving okay. Um, it's hard to know because this repeater site has uh, a lot of broadcast RF um, from transmitters that run high power. So I kind of don't really know if it is receiving um, as well as it normally does because it does vary sometimes up and down. Uh, but it probably is on the on the lower end, so we'll we'll see what happens. So that kind of lends me towards the problem being the antenna, and um, we've had problems with this antenna before. Um, don't really know what actually caused it last time. It was all burnt out inside, so um, we'll see what happens. So I've got my I've got all my test gear here in my tub. I've got some other bits and pieces in the back, so we're going to see if we can resolve the issue. So I was just trying to think of ways that I could troubleshoot what might be the problem um, there's like obviously the the thing that stands out to me is the antenna but there could be also a number of other things if the power's down that means that the power amplifier could be down in output power um, that's relatively new i put that in about a month ago so there, there is a new um, power amplifier that's up there so maybe that has dropped in output power um, between the power amplifier and the uh, duplexer or the antenna is a thing called an isolator as well. So what that does is it's a three port um, device. It's actually also known as a circulator as well. So the job of that device is to only allow RF to go in one direction. So basically what happens is you put RF in on one port. So say your transmitter in on one port. The second port you connect through to your antenna or your duplexer in, in our case on the repeater. And then the third port, you have a load. So you have a dummy load that can handle um, the maximum RF power continuously from your transmitter. So the idea behind that is that RF only flows in one direction. So um, I, there, there's all sorts of magnets and all sorts of funky stuff inside. I don't know exactly how they how they work. Um, they've got like a yeah, magnetic material in there and they're very highly or critically tuned. But yeah, the uh, circulator's job is to make sure that the, it is to basically, is, well, there's two jobs, is to protect the transmitter from um, any um, anything that goes wrong with the duplexer or the antenna. So say the antenna goes open circuit or, you know, gets snapped off or um, falls off the mountain for some reason then basically what that circulator does is um, always provides a good match. So what will happen is you will get um, any reflected power will go straight back into the load. So you transmit basically on that first port, the RF will go usually out the second port to your antenna. If there's any reflected power that comes back, that reflected power will then go down and into the load and you won't see any reflected power basically on your transmitter at all, which is good because it protects your your final uh, finals, your final output uh, devices from from uh, high SWR. So you can basically transmit all day long into no antenna, and your finals will be protected because all of the RF power will be going down and into the load. So the second thing that 
the isolateral circulator does is it stops any RF from mixing in your power amplifier and then re-radiating out, um, which can cause all sorts of frequencies all over the place. So basically what happens is because it's a one-way device, the RF will only travel in one direction. So from port one to port two, and then it will go to port three, but it can't, it can't go backwards. It can't go from port three to port two or from port two to port one. So there's no reflected power. Um, and no RF can travel in that direction. So if you have RF coming back down on port two from your antenna uh, from another transmitter, it's not gonna go back into port one where your transmitter's power amplifier is. So it can't do any mixing. It'll, it can only travel in one direction and the only port it can go to is port three, which is where your load is. So basically you can um, dump all of the RF that's coming back down into that load and, uh, and you won't get any mix mixing in the final output. So um, so that's on the repeater as well. That could possibly be faulty, maybe, because I also installed that only about a month ago. Yeah, lovely day to be going up to the top of the mountain. Um, it's, just, it's just one of those things as a repeater, when you look after repeaters, you're always doing something and fixing something to make sure that it's running at uh, as good as you like it. So there's a couple of troubleshooting steps that I'm gonna to do today. The first one is I'm just gonna plug in my IC705 into the antenna and just transmit on the repeater's output frequency and just see what the SWR is. If the SWR is high, then it's probably a good indication that the antenna is faulty and that I need to remove it. So um, I won't be able to remove it today, but we'll do that in the future. I do have a backup antenna, so we'll be able to then test the backup antenna, plug that in and make sure that that's working. So if, if the SWR comes back good though on the antenna, then I can then go further down the chain. I can unplug the power amplifier from the antenna, plug it directly into my service monitor and measure the output power and see uh, what's going on there. If that's not the problem, then I can go a little bit further back in the chain. Maybe the um, exciter, so the lower power transmitter that drives the power amplifier, maybe there's not enough RF output power coming out of that then I'll test the output power out of that and see what happens. So you kind of, I like to work back in the chain. Some people like to work forward in the chain. They might test the uh, transmitter first and then the antenna, but I'm gonna go back the other way and test the antenna first. So it doesn't matter which way, as long as you eliminate, you know, it's a process of elimination basically and try and figure out what the problem is. A lot of the things that I don't think it is, I don't think it's the duplexer because that just sits there and as long as it doesn't get bumped or knocked, then it's more than likely not the problem. Um, there's also uh, the isolator. I can also, I can test the isolator. I can take all of these things out of the line. So there's obviously, there's a chain of things that are connected together and, um, and I'll just take them out one at a time until I figure out what the, the actual problem is. So anyway, it's slow going behind this bus, but I'm gonna get there eventually. That didn't take long to figure out what the problem was. So what I've done is I've just plugged in the antenna to the 705 here with a short bit of cable. I don't see any noise on the waterfall which is very unusual as well. But just watch this second meter to the bottom here. Boom. SWR off the chart. So there's obviously another problem with that antenna outside. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that antenna off. Oop, drop my coax and I'm going to plug that into the other antenna that is on the top, which is the dipole antenna, and test that. Good news is we can see noise on the scope, and we have a low SWR. So lucky we've got a backup folded dipole antenna, so I'm gonna to have to come back at some point and remove that vertical. So this is how important it is to have this isolator uh, that I mentioned before. Have a look at this. So even though the SWR was off the scale, I'm still getting my 60 watts out. So we've got two antennas. This is the dodgy vertical antenna that we ended up doing the SWR test on and it was bad. So what I've done is I come down now through this coax and into one side of the duplexer in there. So I've actually split the duplexer up. So now I'm receiving on, I'm receiving with the bad antenna. It's got bad SWR, but it still receives. It could still hear. Um, I don't know how well. I did do some tests with a couple of stations around town and I could still hear them. So I've put the bad antenna on this side of the duplexer on the receive side. 
I've also put in three extra filters there as well to try and cut down on some of that broadcast noise that's here. And then on the transmit side here, what I've done is I've run that off of the other antenna, which is the folded dipole. Hopefully now that will semi work until at least I get uh, the other antenna fixed. So without a doubt, I'm going to be back here pretty soon to fix that antenna issue. Now, if you want the 101 on amateur radio repeaters and how to get a repeater that's actually working, unlike this one, <laughs> then I did a video and a presentation here about all about amateur radio repeaters, 101 for beginners.